What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Scarlett and today we're going to learn how to create this effect. All the effects that we're going to be using is absolutely for free. The only plugin that I will probably be using is the heat distortion plugin from Video Copilot. Apart from that, everything else is completely for free. I have personally customized every single thing so that it can be absolutely easy for you to use. Be sure to download all the files. The link is down below and let's go ahead and jump right in. Double click this space and what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, import your footage one because we're going to be working with this specific video. And I uh, just place that into another uh, folder and just call this footage. You don't have to if you don't want to. Double click this space one more time and come all the way back into your uh, VFX. Uh, go ahead and click the VFX area and select these three. Import those three. Drag that into a different folder and rename this folder to VFX. Double click this space one more time and I want you to come all the way over here into your sound effects tab. Double click the sound effects folder and just press, actually, Click the sound effects folder and just press import folder so that it can already import the sound effects. Now, here's what we're going to do next. What we're going to do next is we're going to come all the way over here. We're going to go ahead and drag our footage one and drag it into a new composition. So again, I did shoot this video again in uh, 4K, but I decided to minimize the video size to 1080 by 920 pixels. So that's the reason why it has that look. But here's exactly what we're going to do. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to manually move this time indicator a few frames forward to the part where I'm, it looks like I'm getting ready to run. So just about right here where I bend my knees a bit, right, just right here, we're going to hit control shift D or command shift D on your keyboard to basically split the layer. Then what I want you to do is I want you to move this time indicator a few frames forward to where I move completely out of the frame. Now, of course, you can see me here in the background, but you can completely ignore that because I'm pretty sure if you're sh recording your video, your video should completely look different from mine. But again, this is just a practice video. What I want you to do is I want you to move this time indicator a few frames where I completely run out of the frame, hit Control Shift D and split that layer. Now, this is going to be the area where we're going to actually speed up this specific clip. What I want you to do is right click this, rename this to speed or sped up. And you can even change the color to like red. Then what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and right click this specific area, go to time, go to time stretch and change the stretch factor to like what 10 and then press OK. Then what I want you to do is I want you to move this last ending piece and move it all the way over here. And what you can even do, right? Um, you can even press right click on it, go to time and go ahead and click on freeze frame so it can just freeze the, the background. You can go ahead and rename this as well too by right clicking it and clicking on rename. Rename this to BG for background and change the color from uh, whatever color it is to maybe like brown. So if, if your color is silver, again, don't worry. It, it's just I basically color coordinate all my stuff. So that's the reason why my stuff looks like that. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and hit Control S to save your project. Just save it as the flash. All right. The flash running. And then press enter to save. Now, once you've done that, right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to play around with this specific area. So if I press play, it looks like my subject completely runs out of the frame. Now, again, like I said, ignore this specific image because I know you can see me in the background, but please just do your best to basically ignore that. It's not necessarily needed. But basically, right, you can see my character running out of the frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to come all the way over here to the effects and presets area, right? This specific area. And we're going to search up motion blur. Go ahead and grab CC force motion blur and drag that into our sped up layer. Now, if you already drag it into your sped up layer, you should see that it has added some sort of motion blur to our subject. So if you press play by pressing the space bar, so it looks like, you know, as he's running away from the frame, the camera finds it very hard to capture our subject. Usually this will be, the flash is usually called a blur in, in most of the comics, but anyways, 
for those of you guys who are comic fans, you should know exactly what I'm talking about. Hit Control S to basically save your progress. Now, here's what we're going to do next. We're going to come into our project panel. We're going to come all the way into our SFX, which is the sound effects tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drag the very first sound effects, which is the run in sound effects 28 and drag that into our composition. Double click L to basically see the volume properties in the waveform. What I want you to do is go ahead and uh, manually reposition this somewhere around here and then press play to make sure that the sound matches uh, the footage as he runs. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna press L on that specific sound effect, and we're gonna basically turn the volume down a little bit. Now, of course, if you see that the colors are peach, again, I manually uh, change the settings on my After Effects to basically color coordinate everything. So my sound effects colors are always going to be peach. So if you see that, and if your colors are not the same, it's okay. You can always come over here and change the color. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag in the second sound effect, which is the run in 10. And we're going to drag that into our layer. Now, again, the whole idea is we're trying to build some sort of, um, how do I put it in the right words? We're, we're trying to get a specific look to the sound effect. So what I'm trying to say is that we, we, you, we want the sound effects to sound cinematic as much as possible. That's the reason why I always stack up different layers of sound to get the sound that we're basically looking for for our shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press play or double click L to make sure that the waveform matches the exact area. Crop this out a bit and press play. Now that sounds a little bit more better, right? So to even give it a bit of a spice to it, I, oh, I went ahead and added this heavy cinematic hit sound effect as well to, to it to give it a bit of a boom. Like remember, if the flash is running, right, he's running with a lot of sonic speed, sonic boom. So he's going so fast that you can't see him and you need to be able to feel that impact. So grab the heavy cinematic hit and drag that into our composition. Double click L to make sure that the waveforms are perfectly aligned and just reposition this somewhere around here to make sure that the part where the sound begins to get really loud is where it basically blasts off. So that's exactly what we want. Press L on, on the heavy automatic sound effects and just decrease the sound effect a bit and press Control S to save. And now run it back and press play. If it's too loud, press L one more time and decrease this all the way to like negative 21 and press play. If it's too low, bring it up again. That's more like it. Hit Control S to basically save your project. That's perfect. Now that we have added all the sound effects, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add some lightning flicker because if you guys pay attention to Zoom, you already know how Zoom basically looks like when he runs from frame to frame. So we're gonna basically mimic the same effects. Now, of course, remember, you can change the colors of these specific lightning assets to whatever color you want, okay? Whatever color you want, okay? So let's go ahead and let's come all the way into our VFX tab. You should see where I basically added this um, already customized colorful sparks. What I want you to do is grab the colorful sparks and just drag it into our composition. Now I want you to go ahead and change the color from uh, silver or to navy blue to like cyan. I want you to change it to this color. This color is a little bit more nice. Change it to cyan. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically animate this lightning. Now remember this lightning, I personally uh, created this myself with some different lightning assets and I just put it together to create this. So we're gonna go ahead and play around with this. What we're gonna do first is, we're gonna come all the way over here to our rectangle tool, right? Click and hold the rectangle tool and go ahead and click on the eclipse tool. Then what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and double click the eclipse tool to create some sort of silhouette type of mask, right? Then what I want you to do is click on the colorful sparks layer and then go ahead and readjust the mask a bit so that's a bit smaller and then press F on the keyboard and then basically go ahead and feather this out a bit. Double click M or triple click M again to bring up the mask expansion and go ahead and decrease the mask expansion a bit. Then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna click on toggle switches and mode if you don't have that. Make sure you've clicked on it until you see under mode, click on mode under colorful sparks. Go all the way over to screen and change the blending mode from normal to screen. So again, if it's at normal, I want you to go ahead and change it from normal to screen. Excellent. 
All right. So now you have this lightning flicker and then we have completely removed the black background from our scene. Hit control S to basically save your project. Now let's go ahead and change the color of this lightning a bit so that we can have a consistent color. Go ahead and come to the effects and presets tab and I want you to go ahead and search up hue slash saturation. Now go ahead and drag hue slash saturation into our colorful sparks. Go ahead and click on colorize and go ahead and increase the saturation all the way up to 100. Go ahead and uh, like again, I am doing a zoom animation type of edit. So just change the color to like something like 228, this type of blue. Now I did download the plugin. This plugin is completely free. I do highly recommend downloading it from Video Copilot. It's called Color Vibrance. If you don't have that, that's completely fine. You can always download it at any time you want and then just restart After Effects and just open it up again. Click on the Color Vibrance plugin if you, for those of you guys who do have it, drag that into your layer and also be sure to change the color as well to like blue. So that kind of brings in, it kind of gives the blue some sort of uh, vibrance. So I would change it to this sort of like milky type of blue color. So just go ahead and type in these properties, 00D88FF to get the same exact look. Now what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and animate our lightning layer to basically fit our subject. Now, or to move around our subject's body. So go ahead and press the colorful sparks, right? Press M on the keyboard to bring up the mask path and just go ahead and set a lock on the mask path so that we don't you know, mess around with the mask. If you don't like to see this mask around it, just go ahead and turn off this specific mask layer and it's basically going to hide, hide the outline of the mask. What I want you to do now is, is come move all the way, move the time indicator all the way to the very beginning. Press S on the keyboard and hold shift and press P to bring up scale. What I want you to do is set two keyframes on the scale and the position. Decrease the scale all the way a little bit to around like 21 and then just reposition this around your subject's body. So what, I, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reposition it first at the, at the head. And what you can even do is zoom in into our footage or you can zoom in by coming over here or pressing control plus or command plus to zoom in. Once you've done that, go ahead and uh, reposition the lightning layer all the way over here. And then what we're gonna do is, matter of fact, hold on, I need to do this real quick. Uh, where's info, info, there we go. Give me one second, guys. Uh, something is not right, let me close these panels. Um, I do not have my info layer, where is info? Give me a second, guys. Okay, there we go. So what we're gonna do is, what I'm going to do basically is essentially, right, I'm going to come all the way over here to my previews tab, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, uh, what's it called, move to the next frame. Once I move to the next frame, right, I'm going to reposition the lightning somewhere on my leg, move to the next frame, reposition it somewhere on my other arm, move to the next frame, reposition it somewhere around my leg. Now, most of you, gonna, you guys are going to be like, wait, are we going to be doing this throughout no, we're not. I'm going to show you a secret where you don't have to consistently do this over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move to the next frame, reposition this right here, move to the next frame, reposition this somewhere here in my groin area, move to the next frame, uh, move to the next frame and then reposition this somewhere up here. And then we're going to move all the way over here to the very beginning. We're going to go ahead and hold Alt on your keyboard. Hold Alt for people that are using Windows or our um, option for those of you who are using Mac. Then go ahead and click on the position icon. And then once you've done that, right, once you've clicked on the position keyframe, it's going to open up a different under box little area. Then we're gonna go ahead and type in this specific expression. Type in L-O-O-P, all right? So let me run it back, L-O-O-P. For those of you guys who do have Adobe After Effects 2023, it should give you this option. But for those of you who don't, type in L-O-O-P out, open bracket, close bracket, and then go ahead and select those two and then click away. What's gonna happen is this keyframe is just gonna consistently loop. But I think I made a mistake. So let's go ahead and let's change something. Let me delete this ending piece and then close it one more time. There we go. So it should look something like this, loop out. There should not be nothing after the closed bracket. If you move this time indicator all the way over here, you should see that it continues to loop around our subject's body. What we're gonna do next is, we're gonna move all the way over here to the very end, right here where, before I start to run, 
we're gonna go ahead and come all the way over here hit on the colorful spark scene control shift d to split the layer and delete the specific ending piece move this time indicator right back here and just maybe minimize the scale all the way to like 15. so the scale is decreasing over time so it's gonna look something like this you see that now that's awesome now we have added some sparks we're gonna go ahead and add some distortion and some color to our sparks hit Control s to save now i want you to come in this space right right click on this space go to new and go ahead and click on adjustment layer now move this time indicator all the way over here to the very end hit Control shift d or command shift d to split the layer delete that piece come all the way over here click on the uh, adjustment layer press enter on your keyboard and rename this to flicker plus distortion all right excellent now once you've done that right what i want you to do is i want you to go ahead and click on the flicker um uh, distortion uh whatever layer right come all the way over here to the pen tool and i want you to go ahead and draw a rough mask around where the lightning is basically taking place and close that mask select the selection tool button and what i want you to do is i want you to come to the effects and presets tab and i want you to search up this effect called curves click on curves click and drag curves into our flicker slash distortion once you've done that right i want you to go ahead and increase the brightness a bit so it's basically going to increase the brightness of the masked area go ahead and increase the rgb click on the rgb and come all the way down to blue go ahead and select blue because the color of my lightning is blue so it would only make sense for me to basically increase this to blue as well too increase the blue a bit click on red and then go ahead and decrease red a bit so it can give it a nice bluish tint go ahead and hit Control s to save and what i want you to do is i want you to place the flicker distortion below the colorful sparks now here's what's going to happen next we're going to come all the way over here to the right side you should see the parent pick whip tool if you do not see this click toggle switches and mode to see it click the parent pick whip tool and click on this thing so the and select it all the way make sure you parent it to the colorful sparks now every time the colorful sparks move you can clearly see that our little light thingy follows it perfect now we're not done yet we're going to press f on the keyboard on the flicker plus distortion and we're going to feather this out a bit so that the light itself sort of like fades away so that it's not some sort of harsh light you, you get what i'm trying to say excellent hit Control s to save close the curves come all the way to the effects and presets tab and search up heat distortion i highly recommend buying purchasing heat distortion from video copilot i'm not going to teach you guys any other way if you want to learn uh, uh, um how to use heat distortion check my other tutorials how to make a different kind of heat distortion you can check out the other tutorials click and drag the heat distortion into the flicker plus distortion tab and automatically you should see this sort of like a you know distorted image decrease the heat amount because that's not going to be needed and i want you to go ahead and increase the wind speed i'm going to change the quality from full to quarter all right and i'm going to zoom out a bit i'm going to hit Control s to save and then i'm going to press play all right so if i if i change this back to full right and let's say i press n over here to only highlight this specific area and i press play check this out You can see that as the lightning is flickering, there is some sort of distorted energy around our subject. Now, to make this even cooler, right, double click M and go ahead and uh, increase the mask expansion a bit. And then just increase it to around like 537. I think that's pretty good. And if you press play, it's a little bit too bright, right? Or it's a little, it has too much distorted energy. Just change the distortion amount to five. And then if I press play, and then go ahead and increase the feather out the feather properties a bit to like 183. You see what we just did? Hit Control S to basically save your project. Isn't that cool? Go ahead and go ahead and press this. Click uh, 100 and go ahead and press Fit up to 100. Now, once we have done that, right, 
we have successfully added some lightning animation. Now, I've already taught you guys how to change the colors. You can feel free to change the colors to match your lightning. Say if you want to make the lightning red, you can change the colors to make it red. Say if you want to make the lightning blue, you can change the colors to make it blue. Excellent. Hit Control S to save. Now, once we have done that, right, if you pre press play so far, perfect. Hit Control S to save. Now, here is the fun part. Here is where we're going to start to add some lightning to our scene. Now, here's what we're going to do next, right? I'm going to go ahead and click on solids over here and just drag it into the, uh, the footage tab. We're going to come all the way back over here, right? I'm going to double click this space and I'm going to go back to import. I'm going to come all the way back into our this folder called the Ultimate Strike Pack. I want you to go ahead and double click this folder. I want you to go ahead and, and again, big shout out to, um, I'm going to leave the link to the people who actually made this lightning pack so that you guys can go ahead and subscribe to their channel. This is not something I made. Okay. Shout out to the person who made, it. I forgot their name. I'm going to go ahead and list it down below so you guys can go ahead and check them out. Go ahead and click on run in, right? If you click on the running folder, you should see multiple different folders of different kinds of lightning, lightning assets. Okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and select maybe like run in nine. And we're going to take a look at this specific lightning sequence. Now, if you do not have the same exact look right here, you can go ahead and click on uh, extra large icons and you can also click on the hide preview pane or click on bring the preview panes, um, uh, pane to be able to see what I'm basically seeing. So we're going to go ahead and select the run in folder nine, select the very first one, right? And make sure PNG sequence is selected and then press import. Once you've done that right, drag this into our layer. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and press S on the keyboard. We're gonna reduce the scale. We're gonna go ahead and change the name to Lightning. You can even change the color from this to maybe like a blue because my color is blue. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the scale is reduced all the way we're going to come all the way up here. We're going to repeat the same process that we repeated for the colorful sparks by clicking on the lightning, coming all the way up here to the eclipse tool, double clicking the eclipse tool to create so, some, some sort of eclipse around our, our mask or our layer. Press F on the keyboard, feather this out all the way around like what, 479. Go ahead and click down this drop down menu and basically decrease the mask expansion a bit. Change the mode from normal to screen. And then go ahead and close this out. Click on the toggle switch some mode and go ahead and click on this specific icon to make this thing, this lightning, a 3D layer. Now, once you've done that, right, we're going to go ahead and click on this drop down menu. We're going to close this mask. We're going to go to transform and we're basically going to change the orientation a bit all the way around and change the orientation until it's around 253. Go ahead and set a keyframe on position. Set a keyframe on scale, set a keyframe on, or on orientation. Close this out, press on the lightning and press U on your keyboard to bring up all of the keyframes that we have selected. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move one frame to the right and we're just basically going to readjust the orientation a bit and we're going to basically adjust the scale, increase the scale a bit and basically reposition it. Move another frame to the right, reposition it. You can clearly see that the lightning is already, matter of fact, hit control Z. My apologies, press M on the keyboard to bring up the mask settings for the lightning. Set a lock on the mask itself. Close that out. Press on the lightning again and press U to bring back the keyframes. Move to the next keyframe, reposition it, stretch it out a bit. Because remember when, when the flash runs, the lightning seems to appear that it's stretched out. Move to the next keyframe, reposition it one more time, stretch it out a bit. My apology, hit Control Z if you make a mistake. Hit Control Z one more time. Click on this bottom piece and just stretch it out a bit. And you can go ahead and change the orientation. All right? I'm changing the properties down here, but you can also change the properties by moving your mouse cursor to the Y or to the X to change the orientation. Move to the next keyframe. Reposition it one more time. Move to the next keyframe. Reposition the third time. Move to the next keyframe and hit Control Shift D to basically split this ending piece and delete it. So now if you press play, see what we just did? We have created our first line of lightning. 
Now we're gonna add more layers to get this awesome effect. Hit Control S to save. Now before we duplicate it and we do all that stuff, we're gonna come back into our colorful sparks. We're gonna click on this drop down menu. We're gonna close the transform. We're gonna click on the effects and we're gonna hit Control or Command C to copy. Copy the effects, click on the lightning, hit Control V to paste. So it's basically going to paste everything into here so that the lightning color continues to be consistent throughout. So if I press play, you see what we just did? So what you can even do is you can reduce the vibrance a bit. If the vibrance is a bit too much, you can always reduce the vibrance so that's not too much. And there you go. All right, feel free to always adjust the, the luminance, the preserved luminance. You can reduce it, you can increase it. You can reduce the brightness. Matter of fact, keep the brightness okay. And uh, I'm gonna reduce the vibrance just a tad so that it's not too much. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I'm gonna hit Control S to save. Now, here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take the same lightning layer. We're gonna hit Control D to duplicate it a second time. We're gonna move this about two frames in, right? To the right, and then reposition it right here. Now, once it comes up, you're just going to start animating it again. So on the bottom lightning layer, place a lock on it, and you can even turn it off. Matter of fact, just turn it on. The, the, this lightning layer, the second one, you can go ahead and reposition it as well too. Somewhere around here, move to the next frame. You can clearly see that we still have, just reposition it somewhere else. So I would reposition this below, move to the next frame, Perfect, you can clearly see what we're doing. You can increase the scale a bit. You can do something with the scale. Move to the next frame. You can reposition it somewhere around here. Again, the whole idea is you want this to look like as if he is running with so many different pieces of lightning. So you can increase the scale for this one. Move to the next frame. Reposition here, move to the next frame. And it's just, it's just the same thing, rinse and repeat. So you can clearly see that when we added a second lightning, it looks like he has more lightning. Perfect. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and take off the log from the lightning, select both of these two layers, hit Control D to duplicate, and just drag these two layers on top and reposition it somewhere around here. So now if you press play, it looks like the lightning is continuous right but it looks like it, it just doesn't look organic so we're gonna do some changes to that so the lightning three we're gonna turn off the layer and we're gonna turn off the lightning four layer and we're just gonna turn on the lightning three layer back again I do apologize for making you do that twice we're gonna crop this out a bit two frames and just reposition it somewhere around here and we're gonna just basically reposition it somewhere here and we're just basically going to stretch this out a bit so you can stretch out the scale and change the orientation a bit to somewhere around here. Perfect. Move to the next frame and reposition it one more time. Change the scale. You know, you can always change the scale. Again, feel free to change the scale as much as possible. Move to the next frame, reposition it one here, somewhere around here. Move to the next frame, reposition it somewhere around here move to the next frame and reposition it like all the way back here. And if you press play, now it's starting to look like some real lightning is moving as he moves. Let's go ahead and turn on the fourth lightning layer. And again, it's the same process. Crop out the two frames at the, at the front, move this somewhere around here, and just rinse and repeat the process. Same stuff, nothing has changed. That's exactly how I do my lightning effects. It's pretty easy, huh? Move to the next frame, reposition it one last time, move to the next frame, reposition it somewhere around here, move to the next frame, reposition a bit backwards, move to the next frame, and just move this backwards. Now, if you press play. So the part where it gets bigger, like right here, maybe we can decrease it a bit so it doesn't get too big. So it looks something like this. So you see what we just did right here, right? Hit Control S to basically save your progress. 
we have created this sort of like lightning animation. Perfect. Now here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna click on the flicker and distortion, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control D to duplicate that. We're gonna move that all the way up here on top of our lightning layer. And we're gonna reposition it somewhere around here. We're gonna go ahead and turn off, click on this, uh, the what's it called, the parent area, and go ahead and select this to none. Make sure it's selected to none, okay? Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna press M on the keyboard. We're gonna click on the mask pad, mask, mask one, and just delete the mask. We're gonna press S on the keyboard, and we're just basically going to increase the scale back to 100. And we're just basically going to reposition it like this. So make sure you have these same exact values as I have. The values should be for the position, press P, 538.6, 957.7. Not saying it's gonna do anything, it really just doesn't do anything. I just wanna make sure you have the same position that I have. What I want you to do is, I want you to go ahead and draw a mask around our guy. Close the mask. Go ahead and select the selection tool. And what I want you to do is I want you to press M on the keyboard, set a keyframe on mask path on the, on the flicker distortion tool. Move this time indicator a few frames forward. And then I want you to basically increase, oops, hit Control Z if you make a mistake, increase the mask as big as this. Okay. Move this keyframe a few frames forward and then basically grab, click on the mask itself and move this mask all the way over here. So it's gonna look something like this, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press F and we're basically going to feather this out a bit. Feather it out to like somewhere around like 500 and come all the way over here and close this curves and maybe increase the wind speed a bit. Change the wind direction all the way to like 86. If you don't have distortion, again, you don't have to worry about this. You can, uh, I guess, increase the scale just a tad and maybe change the distortion amount back to 10. Now, if I press play, right? We want the distortion itself to take, to be the slowest one. It has to be slower than the lightning itself. So press M on the keyboard to bring up the mass path again and move this last keyframe all the way to the very end and press play. So you see what just happened? can clearly see the aftermath. Now again, if the vibrance is a bit too much on the blue, I always told you, feel free to decrease the vibrance. So I can always decrease the vibrance to like, what, 0 0.06, hit control C to copy this vibrance, click on this, hit control V to paste that same vibrance on all of them. So I press play. So you see what just happened? So you see what just happened? Perfect. Hit Control S to basically save the progress. Now the last part we're gonna add to make this even look much more cool is some dust. Now of course there is some two different pieces of dust that I basically added into the project file. Move this lightning into your VFX tab. And we're gonna basically bring that dust into our scene. We're gonna bring that dust in here and we're gonna make this look really cool. Hit Control S to save your progress. Go ahead and click on the dust blast itself. Drag the dust blast into our composition. Now here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna turn off the sound from the dust blast. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make this a 3D layer. We're gonna go ahead and click on the toggle switch as a mode. We're gonna change the mode, again, under mode, change the dust blast from normal to screen. Change the dust blast to yellow. So that you know it's dust blast. And go ahead and uh, Click this down, uh, this down menu area, click on transform, and change the orientation. Perfect. Now scroll up, and if basically you move this time indicator a few frames forward, you should see the dust itself. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this dust around here. We're gonna press S on the keyboard. We're gonna go ahead and increase the scale a bit and reposition it somewhere around here. So if you press play, so you see what just happened? What we're gonna do is we're gonna just uh, just move it like around here, somewhere around here. Okay, press S, increase the scale just a bit more and just reposition it somewhere around. So if you press play, this is more of like some sort of like the after dust image. All right, this is a customized dust 
So don't worry about it. if you want to buy some real dust assets. I highly recommend checking out uh, uh, Triune Digital's uh, dust pack. It's really nice. Hit Control D to duplicate the dust a second time. This time around, I want you to go ahead and make the this dust even bigger, right? Make it even bigger. And what I want you to do is I want you to right click on the dust, go to time, go to time stretch, and go ahead and change the stretch factor to like 130. So it's gonna basically slow down the dust a bit. Press T on the keyboard for the dust blast, the second one, and reduce the opacity all the way down to somewhere around like 62. Now, if you press play. So we have fast dust, we have some fast dust, and we have some slow dust. Perfect. Hit Control S to basically save. Now, once you've done that, right, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and come all the way over here into your VFX pad tab and click on the dust wave. All right, this dust wave, I did provide it. Drag that dust wave into your composition. The dust wave automatically should be a different color. It should be much more of a darker color. Go ahead and come all the way to the effects and presets tab and search up again, hue slash saturation. Click and drag that into your dust wave uh, layer. Change the color of the that dust as well to maybe like orange. And then go ahead and click on colorize. Decrease the color, uh, colorize saturation to zero and increase the lightness all the way to 100. And then this is going to be the dust that's basically going to pop up when he gets closer to the camera. So reposition this dust all the way down here. Press S on your keyboard and increase the scale all the way up somewhere around like 253 and reposition the dust somewhere around here. Right click on the dust, wave, go to time, time stretch, and change the stretch factor to around 30. Reposition this somewhere around here. So move this time indicator somewhere around here when our subject is right here, the dust should not even be too bright. So move the dust somewhere around here. And if you were to press play, it seems like the dust starts before he comes. So just move this dust a few frames forward. Remember, after he completely crosses over, that's when you should start to see the dust appearing. So you should press play. What you can even do is you can go ahead and click on the dust, press R on the keyboard to bring up rotation, right? And then just basically rotate this negative 22 to the left and then reposition it somewhere around here. Press play. So you see what we just did? And again, I highly recommend not shooting this behind some sort of mirror or some sort of glass, but if you definitely do want to do that, there is uh, different techniques. You just basically got to make sure that whatever that's happening over here, it has to basically match this specific area. And that's not what I'm teaching today. I'm only teaching you guys this specific um, tutorial. Right? Now, once you've added some dust, it should look something like this. Right? You see what we just did? Perfect. Hit Control S to basically save your project. Now, there are many things you can add to make this look much more cooler. If you want to add more dust, you can go ahead and click on the dust blast itself and control D to duplicate it one more time. You can reposition this dust a little few frames all the way to the uh, to the right. Press play. So there you have much more of a longevity type of dust trail. Now, let's say if you want to hear the sound effect of the lightning a bit more as he runs through here, instead of this heavy atomic sound effect, click on the run in negative, uh, run in 28, press L on your keyboard and just make this, uh, move this all the way over to negative four. Change the sound itself and press play. Excellent. Hit Control S to basically save your project. Now I'm going to show you guys how to add this last thing to make this even pop one more. What you're going to do is you want to go ahead and click on, I mean, come over here to this side, right click on the space, go to new and go ahead and click on adjustment layer. We're going to basically add this simple, but very easy effect and go ahead and crop this out a bit. Uh, rename this to bulge. All right, we're going to add this effect called bulge, right? And I like to add this effect because it just kind of like gives it a bit of a pop as our subject is basically coming in the screen. Go to the effects and presets tab and search up bulge. Click and drag bulge into our composition. And be sure to go ahead and change 
the pin or click on the pin somewhere around here make sure that the center pin is somewhere around here right make sure you move this time indicator all the way over here to the very beginning move this all the way over here and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set a keyframe on the horizontal radius the vertical radius bulge height taper radius and uh you can always always you know do something with the center but it's not heavily required and what i want you to do is i want you to move this time indicator about four frames in and uh what i want you to do is i want you to move the center over here and what i want you to do is i want you to basically increase the size of our bulge now feel free to change the quality from full to quarter so it can move faster zoom out a bit and make sure you click on the ending piece right here and increase the bulge size a bit like this press on the bulge layer at the very bottom press u on the keyboard to see the um all the keyframes and then what i want you to do is i want you to go ahead and select all these keyframes hit Control c move this keyframe all the way to the very end right here and hit Control v to paste now here's what's going to happen right now, of course, the bulge itself is very slow, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna select these three keyframes at the very top, and we're gonna move this all the way over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come all the way to the very end, and we're gonna basically reduce the bulge height a bit to like negative three. We're gonna move this keyframe all the way over here, somewhere around the middle of this layer, and we're gonna go ahead and change this back to fit to 100. Now feel free to play around with this to get the look that you're looking for, but I like to do it like this. I'm gonna press play. So you see what we just did? It's a bit faster and there's too much of the bulge happening. We don't want that, all right? This is too much, all right? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna come all the way over here to the very beginning and we're gonna decrease this from one all the way to like negative three. We're gonna come all the way over here to this ending piece and change this from negative three to like negative one. Press play. All right, cool. It's not bad, hold on. And matter of fact, let's delete this negative three keyframe. Delete that, press play. Okay. It's pretty, pretty subtle because we don't want it to be too noticeable, right? That's the whole idea of this bulge. You don't have to add it if you don't want to, but that's the whole idea. Matter of fact, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and uh, let's see, I wanna check, take a look at the taper radius, right? Let's move this keyframe of the taper radius all the way over here as well too. Just crop this out. I don't, I don't even know, know why I made you guys do that. Um, move this, come over here to the very ending piece, right? And let's see if we were to decrease the taper radius or increase the taper radius to around 727. Let's see what it does. That's right. It still has this crazy effect. So here's what we're gonna do. Just go ahead and come all the way to the very beginning and maybe increase the taper radius to around like 300. Press play. Matter of fact, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come all the way over here, stretch this out one more time, I do apologize, and just move this a few frames forward. That's more like it. A few frames forward again. So there's sort of like this as he runs, and then it kind of like that that warp effect, and then it kind of like basically reduces as he kind of like moves away from the camera. This is pretty good, y'all. Hit Control S to save, and then that's basically how you how you do this. Um, Hit Control S to save, and that's basically how you do this simple effect. Now, here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go ahead and add um, some camera shake to basically, you know, finalize this, right? So go ahead and come all the way to the very bottom, select all these layers, right click it, go ahead and click on pre-compose and rename this to done. Now, what we're gonna do next is, we're gonna come all the way over here to the part where he runs, right? Just about right here. We're gonna hit, actually right over here, we're gonna hit Control Shift D, to split the layer, we're gonna go ahead and move a few frames forward, and we're gonna right here, we're gonna hit Control Shift D. Now, in your effects and presets tab, as for those of you who already know how to add camera shake, you don't have to worry about this, just search up motion tile. All right, there are many different ways to add some camera shake, but this is just my, my way of doing it. Click on motion tile, drag it into this composition, click on mirror edges, and just go ahead and increase both of the output width to like at least something that's above 150. Once you've done that, come all the way over here to the effects and presets tab and search up wiggle position. 
click on wiggle position, drag it into the middle layer, make sure toggle switches and modes is selected, and be sure to click on motion blur. What I want you to do is come over here to the very beginning, set two keyframes on the wiggle, and basically increase the speed amount to like around 29, move all the way to the very end, and decrease this somewhere around, you know, 17, and maybe change this to three, and press play. Ooh, you like that? It's more like, it, it's like you feel the effect. That's really good. Now, the last thing I definitely did forget to add is that when the, when the flash is running, right, there's a huge glow that appears as he runs. So double click this space, right? You can clearly see this glow effect that we added right earlier, which is the flicker plus the distortion. What I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and control D to duplicate that, right? What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press M on the keyboard and we're basically going to delete the mask. What we're going to do is we're going to go also, also delete the distortion from that. And we're going to go ahead and re rename this to glow. All right, rename that to glow. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to come all the way to the pen tool or the eclipse tool and draw some sort of like light highlight of this into our scene, right? Draw some sort of a rough mask and reposition the mask somewhere around here. Press F on the keyboard and feather this out to like 953. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come all the way over here to the very beginning. We're going to press T on the keyboard, set a stopwatch on opacity, move this opacity a few frames forward and decrease this to zero. And then as he runs and gets closer, it brightens up. And then as he completely goes away, it decreases to zero. Now, if you come over here back to your footage one and you press play, you see what we just did? We just added a simple effect. So you see what we just did? Again, if the dust, if the dust is too much, feel free to adjust it. If the wiggle is too much, come all the way over here to the very beginning, press U to see the keyframes, and maybe decrease this down from all the way to 50 to like 37, decrease the wiggle amount from 29 to like 18, press play. And that's basically how you do it, y'all. Hit Control S to save, and then go ahead and process your video. I do want to say thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe, share this with your friends, and uh, DM me on Instagram. Show me your work. I really want to see what you guys have been able to make, and uh, I definitely want to see what you guys got. Again, feel free to change the colors, and that's how you do it. Bye-bye.